What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 55 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019. Hopefully you guys are good. Today we are back with some more Europa League action. It's mid-October and we're going to be taking on FC Luzern, a team who have been... Well, a little bit of a surprise package. They're not exactly a European-renowned team, certainly a team I'm not super familiar with. They are, if I'm not mistaken, owned by a sugar daddy, however. Uh, they play in the Swiss League, as you can see here. And, um, yeah, they're going to be a tricky team. You can see Idrus Voka is their best player because we have a tribute masking on. I can't tell you exactly how good he is. But he looks reasonable, to say the very least. So they're not going to be easy opposition. And they did, of course, beat Ajax not that long ago. And, of course, while they were beating Ajax, we were playing last episode. Which, if you missed, go check it out. But, of course, that was a double header. We lost against Ajax 2-1 away from home. But away from home against Locomotive Moscow picked up a 1-0 win. And since then, the fixtures have come thick and fast. Six games since you were last here in the last three weeks. You can see here we started off with a game against Glenavon. It finished 0-0. Hardly a classic. Uh, Cockbill, man of the match in goal. I mean, that is great to see, of course. He has really stepped up in uh, Jared Thompson picking up an injury. He has been the man we've called upon. And to be honest, I am seriously weighing up just keeping him in goal because the youngster has proven his worth. I mean, you can see here... We have kept clean sheets in our last nine games, which I believe is a club record... And they've all been with him in net. So yeah, that result there followed up with a 4-0 win against Motherwell in the Iron Brew Cup second round against the Motherwell Reserves. Uh, in that competition, actually, we've been drawn against Celtics Reserves. Again, probably a game I'll not cover. But the Iron Brew Cup, a competition we're currently looking reasonably good in. Maybe we can actually go on a run in it. The last few years we've been in it, we've been a little underwhelming. Anyway, we then shifted our attention back to the league where we were playing, of course, in the Premier Division. You can see against Linfield here, uh, two goals for Justin Wright, the first from the penalty spot and then a second in the 13th minute. All in all, a very good performance, to be honest. A convincing performance, perhaps should have been a few more, um, but we kept a clean sheet, and against Linfield, just good to get an away win there. We followed that up with another win, this time against Cliftonville. Again, it was right with the all-important goal for us. We dominated the game from start to finish, as you can see from the stats in the bottom left. And uh, yeah, with that, we went marching on once more. Anyway, two more games to go through. And you can see here we shifted our attention to the County, County Antrim Shield. The first game against Bangor, a 1-0 win. John Morgan with the goal. Um, the youngster, of course, a player who kind of just found himself in the first team with a few injuries. We've given him a little bit of game time here and there. He's done okay. Um, there has had to be a lot of rotation over the course of these fixtures. You might have noticed when I looked at the Linfield and Cliftonfield games, our team's... Rec well, there's going to be players here who you simply don't recognise, like Neil Bale at left-back, who just plays in the under-20s. Um, we actually had an international break come up, but because our fixture schedule is so packed, I couldn't rearrange the games. So as a result, um, we had half the squad on international duty, and it did actually see in some of these games Ian Robson going goal instead of Cockbill. Probably should have mentioned that sooner, but yeah, if you were looking through going, huh, there's names here I don't recognise, basically... Um, for some of these games, particularly some of these tighter games, we just had to rely on our under-20s to come into the team. It was a very bizarre situation, but um, obviously with it being a weird World Cup year, with the fixture congestion being bad anyway, it's just kind of the situation we found ourselves in. Anyway, our most recent game against Glen Torren, a 1-0 win, a pretty much fully rotated side put out for this game. You can see here, uh, it ended up finishing 1-0 after extra time. Jim Meister's long-range effort, the difference maker. Not the most convincing of performances, but it was our rotated 11. And, uh, well, we do go marching on into the counter Antrim Shield semi-final with that result. Anyway, it is the 20th of October today. You can see, just looking at the fixtures, like, there's just an obscene amount of games this month. This Luzern game falls right in the middle. Fortunately, we've got a little bit of a rest break until the Luzern game. Um, and then, as you can see here, in November, the fixtures really ease up over the course of the World Cup, which is, I guess, kind of nice. Um, maybe gives us just a chance to uh, uh, get our breath back after what is going to be a very hectic October and start to November in the coming weeks. 
in terms of team news for today's game against Luzern, um, there's nothing of major note, to be honest. Uh, Neko Williams is out injured. He's a player who hasn't featured quite so much this year. Just a very good backup right back. Simon Carlisle, unfortunately, out with a longer term injury, a double hernia for him. One of the kind of really exciting, hot Northern Irish prospects. So for him to be out for two months is a real shame. But um, just across the board, it's been... An interesting period, really. We've experienced this for a number of years now, but the rotation in the side has to be, you know, monumental throughout the year. You can just see how many players have now played double-figure games in mid-October. Um, it has been something we've very much relied on. And whilst um, offensively, we've not been scoring a load of goals, defensively, we've been just really, really solid. The tactical system we play, this kind of 4-2-3-1 uh, kind of possession orientated system it's not a system that sees a smash teams too often but we just tend to control possession in games don't let them get a grip on it and because well the other team doesn't get a grip on the game doesn't have a lot of the ball at all they can't really create anything against us and well let's hope that we can replicate that kind of success again here today in terms of the team Cockbill is going to keep down his position in goal Jared Thompson not fully fit as I said I am actually thinking I might play Cockbill ahead of Jared Thompson going forward this year. The back four, though, is at full strength. Kieran Kane going to be at left back, of course. We have Cyborg at right back. We have then um, Robert Downey at centre back, a player who actually has been complaining a little bit about lack of first team football, which is mad, to be honest, because whilst he hasn't played that much in the league games, he's been playing so much in European competitions and he's been a player I've been very keen to kind of protect. I don't want him to get injured in unnecessary games. Um, but yeah, he's unhappy about lack of first-team football, despite the fact that so far this season, he's played 14 matches. It, it's a little bit of an odd situation. I understand um, why the players want to play every single league game, but being realistic, it's not entirely feasible. Anyway, the rest of the team is kind of what you'd expect. Lil still doesn't find himself in the first team. I'm going to go with O'Connor, who has really been having a really solid season. It's kind of like him and Lil have had a body swap in terms of O'Connor's gone from being the player who was a little underwhelming last year with only six goals in 28 games to being one of our top, top performers across all competitions. Lil, on the other hand, just really hasn't got going this year. He was unsettled in the summer with some teams being interested in him. You can see they're still interested in him now. We promoted him to captain, gave him a big wage rise. He's not really repaid us thus far for that faith we put in him. But regardless, he's an option on the bench. Also on the bench, we've got Tommy O'Donnell and Bannon as a defensive options. Glenn Dining, since he came back from injury, I don't want to say he's been concerning, but I was hoping for a little more from him. You can see in the league, he's been particularly disappointing. But this is the stage that he likes to perform on. This is the kind of match he thrives in. And well, hopefully, he's going to show us that here today. We are playing away from home in this game. I want to say this is a must win because of how well we've started it. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the world to our European campaign if we were to lose here. But despite the fact Luzerne did beat Ajax last time out, there is no denying in my mind we have to go into this game with the mindset of we are the favourites, we need to play offensive football, we need to play to our strengths, and we should be winning this game reasonably comfortably. Locomotive Moscow, who we beat 2-1 previously, did beat this Luzerne side twice. So with that in mind... I'm hoping that we're going to come good today and really give a performance to remember. That has got to be the aim, ultimately. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can live up to these high expectations I'm setting of us. Um, you can see here, Ajax leading against Locomotive Moscow. That would be pretty much the ideal result in that fixture. Um, Locomotive Moscow tied with us on six points. Ajax trailing with three points from three games going into this round of fixtures. Um, and if we could get a win here and that result stayed as it is, we'd be in... A very, very commanding position with not too many games left. But we can't get carried away here. We can't afford to be complacent. We need to just perform like I know that we can in big European games. And let's see if we can do it. O'Connor does very well to keep the ball in play there. Unfortunately, no one able to follow it up. It is absolutely hammering it down with rain as well. Which is a little bit distracting visually. It almost looks like a thunderstorm. Um, hopefully we're going to have a thunderous performance here and they're not going to score. Well, they are. It's a thunderous effort. Okay, no, no more thunder puns. That I need to rein them in. Okay, that was awful. That was. I need to actually sit down and think about myself after that. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> if you've turned off... I mean, you wouldn't be hearing this if you've turned off the episode, but I, I'm just really sorry for, for the, the puns. They're, they're not good. I don't know, maybe I'm making a, a big deal out of this. Maybe it's a bit of a storm in a teacup. 
God, stop it, Jack. You deserve to lose this game now. I could come up with more puns, but I'm just trying to work out whether or not I want to do... Okay, okay, we're done. <laughs> stop, stop. Please send help. Oh, gosh. I've got a 100% live series coming up. I don't know how I'm going to not do puns all the time. Anyway, we have an effort here. What the hell has just happened? I mean, Justin Wright's been given a gift. It's all gone wrong for them. He scored it, and it's Cyborg, who... I'm not sure if it was a cross or a shot. He has been given rather generously the assist. But, um, yeah, cutting on his left peg, I think that's a shot. Maul has just dropped it, and Wright just... I mean, it's just simple, isn't it? He, he just tucks it away. No nonsense at all. I don't think he was offside here. I mean, we have VAR, so we know he wasn't. Lovely goal there for us. A draw here would see us go up to first in the league. But, well, we need to defend set pieces, and that is something that we've had ongoing issues with, and we're going to continue to hear us. Tissy William Ndenge. What a name that is. <laughs> I, hope I, did, I hope I did it justice. Tapping at the back post. Cockbill. Hmm. I feel like he could have moved a little bit there. Maybe I'm expecting too much from my goalkeeper in FM19 to move, but maybe he could have done something more here, right? Dixon. I mean, why not reply immediately? Cyborg, he's doing well already. I, f I thought the keeper was going to drop it again. You know, he set a precedent now. He looks nervous. I feel like I should be doing the thing, you know, football fans do. It's like, ooh, as the, as the keeper kicks it every time now. He, he looks on edge. I mean, let's not concede a quick-fire double here, please, game. And Dengue again. Cockbill this time does get a hand to it. A relatively strong hand as well. Early on in this game, it's been pretty 50-50. It's been very open, obviously. Both teams have scored. They've had the better of the opportunities, you'd have to say. They probably deserve to be ahead. But it is very much anyone's game after, well, 37 minutes here. I'm going to just tell the player, has, I expect a little bit more. If we could get a goal before half-time, it could prove crucial. Cyborg's on a booking. Let's, let's try and avoid getting him sent off if we can. Right, what can we do here? McCoy and Robert Downey decide they want to have their own game of football at the back. O'Connor now to Sissoko, going to be trying to pull the strings from deep, the experienced centre mid. So far, I don't feel like he's been a standout performer for us, although throughout our time using this system, the centre defensive kind of minded midfielder never really has been the standout player. But Sissoko has just done everything very well and added, I feel like, some much needed experience into our side. Either way, Kieran Kane, back to Sissoko here. Now with Frame, you can hit them from range. A little one-two with Glendine and Cyborg with it. What a goal this could be. The finish at the end of it, not quite there. But really nice passing, a really nice move. That was actually a clear-cut chance. And maybe if it hadn't fallen to our right back, you would have backed whoever it had fallen to to actually find the back of the net. Unfortunately, however, here, um, we are actually going to go in a goal down, which is very disappointing. Um... Obviously, Luzerne, we can't afford to underestimate them. They beat Ajax just like we did. But ultimately, given um, you know the seeding for this group stage, you kind of, as the third seed coming into this, I very much always have my eye on the teams above us. You know, that first and second seed, rather than worrying about the fourth team in the group, you kind of, at least in my mindset, I always feel like oh, that's a given. You know, European Cup competitions, the group stage, the fourth seed is usually just some random team you've not heard of. Luzerne, they have some quality. They're showing it here. Um, we're going to do some changes, I think. We've got 25 minutes to try and get a goal. Um, in terms of what I'd like to do here, Glenn Dining's had another really poor game. I'm going to bring in Bannon for him. I'm also going to bring in Lil for O'Connor, who is on a booking. Defensively, we've not been particularly great today, but um, I need to change things in the final third as much as um, defensively we've not been that great. I'm hoping our defenders can just kind of tighten up for the last 20 minutes, I guess. We've had more clear-cut chances. We just need to be a bit more clinical. For, like, injecting some fresh legs into the final third might be the best way to go about getting something from this game. Anyway, we're about to have an immediate highlight here after the sub-change. We may well be able to. Kane wins the header, nods it into the centre, or has the game switched to full highlights? It has. That is one of the most annoying bugs in FM this year. I don't even know what causes it. Sometimes the settings just reset. You kind of sit there for two or three minutes before you realise the full game is being shown to you. Right, what are we going to do here? Ten minutes left. I've already done a demand more. Let's go for a push forward. And I think to end this, we're going to just commit our inside forwards further up the pitch. Um, I don't really have a lot else I can do, to be honest, in the final third. Um, I guess what I could do is I could bring in... 
We can do a bit of a rejig. We can do a bit of a rejig here. It's not exactly ideal, but I feel like taking off Dixon might be ideal. We can bring in O'Donnell just as a fresh pair of legs and then move Bannon into that advanced forward role. Bannon's goal-scoring return this year, both as a centre attacking mid and striker, has been very solid. So maybe he can, well, put, show us and uh, redeem, I guess, some of the faith we've put him in here to be the man to lead the line for the last few minutes. A little bit of an unconventional change, I guess, to move Justin Wright into that left attacking mid position, but just the way things have worked out, it's what I want to do. Lil maybe with a chance to make something happen here. This could be the pointless highlight, but I want to believe it could amount to something. Dixon can't get the ball into the box. We do have a corner, but it might just be the pointless highlight, and indeed it is. I mean, we might as well go very attacking here. We need a goal to try and pull things level. Luzern showing that they are no pushovers by any means, and now they have their own set piece. It's been one of our kryptonites. We are not good in the air. We are not great defensively as a team, and while that long-range effort from Rodriguez, not a bad effort at all. Hits the crossbar, goes over. Four minutes of added time. The time is just trickling away. We have a late set piece here. Lil goes short to right. He pulls it across. It's hoofed clear. Can we win that ball in the air? We can't. And, well, the cyborg, he's terminated his, uh, his time on the pitch. He is going to get sent off. I don't know if he needed to do that. In the grand scheme of things, it's probably not going to make a great deal of difference with two minutes left of this game in a game we're already losing. In fact, I'm, I'm going to be bold here. We're not even going to change things. I just realised we changed Lil to an advanced playmaker instead of an inside forward on attack. Would that have made a difference in this game? We're never going to know. Um, we, I mean, I'm trying to be a beacon of optimism here. I've kind of come into this episode full of beans for the recording. I was hoping our players would be full of beans as well to put in a top performance. But that really just hasn't materialised there and... It's kind of disappointing. It means, I think if we look at the group here, every single team after four games played has won two and lost two in our group. Depending on if the game remained the same. In fact, you can see here Lokomotiv Moscow and Ajax drew, I think, in the most recent game. Indeed, they did 1-1. So an incredibly tight group here. Given the fact we've got Luzern and Lokomotiv Moscow left to play, the two games you would have imagined at the start of the group stage would be easier, but find themselves ahead of us. Both those games have real significance, and I feel like we have to live com them both. Unfortunately for us, the Luzon game isn't for a, a number of games now, you can see. And then we have a long break till the Locomotive Moscow game. Um, what I may well do is I might do the Luzon game with... I don't know what game I'd even do around it. Maybe we'll do it as a one-off. Maybe we'll do Ballymina, who are in fourth. Um, it's kind of soon as well, isn't it? I feel like we have to do that game. Um, it might be a case if we do lose her next time out and then next episode after that we do some kind of January special with the Glenavon game which at least at the moment they are proving to be our big rivals in the league and that Locomotive Moscow game. Unfortunately just the way fixtures have worked out is not ideal from a, an episode recording perspective I guess. But regardless... We're doing okay. In the league, we're going strong. Glenavon, though, they are proving to be a bit of a thorn in our sides. The games against them are going to prove crucial, I think, in terms of how this season plays out. And equally, in the Europa League, having been in a position where you would have thought, hmm, maybe we could rest a few players for the latter two games, we now find ourselves in a position where we're not even going through as things stand. And there's going to be a bit of pressure on us in the next couple of games to turn up big. But anyway guys that has wrapped up everything from me today hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode if you have do drop a like on it if you've got any comments leave them down below and other than that it is me jack and i will talk to you guys in a bit i'm out